Yeah, how you doing everybody? It's it's no Thursday, it's November the 11th, 2010, and it's later on in the afternoon, and uh, hopefully I'll have a couple of things to discuss, basically today just, so I hope I'm not going to bore people or drag this out. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is a concept called a Lord Lieutenancy, or a Viceroy, and uh, as you know we were on the, the rule of thumb of the Brits for up until 1922 and then as a result of the War of Independence we got rid of them and from the time of essentially from the middle of the 15th century forward we had various viceroys and lord lieutenants and they basically, basically carried out the same diktat and the diktat was from the sovereign and it was to keep Ireland safe etc in their interest and the guard Ireland in their interests it's an imperial diktat, that's what it was. And they were the agents, they were the direct agents, they were the most important political agents of the imperial diktat were the Lord Lieutenants. And they lived in the Vesrigal Lodge <coughs> and it varied in places. Initially it was in Dublin, in Dublin Castle, and then eventually it ended up in the Phoenix Park. And as I say, we got rid of them in 1922 and then we had a series of guys, uh, Governor Generals. We had them up until 1937, until the initiation of the Republic, the Republican concept been embraced. And uh, so from 1937 up until 2010, which is 73 years, we lived, or our citizens lived, in what was deemed to be a sovereign republic. And uh, now that's all finished, we have another Lord Lieutenant. He's not a British Lord, Lord Lieutenant, he's not a, a British Viceroy, he's a European one. So, we're back there, we're back there. His name's Ali Wren, by the way. There's a photograph of him there, you can see him. He's a Finn appointed by the, um, by Brussels. I've put some interesting stuff in his biography, his bio there, I'll put a link up to it there, you can have a look at him. He's an interesting character. He's a direct appointee and he's here, just like our financial regulator, Matthew Ellerfield. And they, they don't know their leading step anything to do with the Irish government or the Irish state or anything. And they report only to one person, really, at the end of the day, and that's to their their boss man in Brussels. And so it is with Mr. Wren. You better get used to him. You better get used to looking at him and hearing him, because you're going to see and hear him a lot more. He's here, and he's here for, for the duration, until they have all this, this business sorted out. Um... Uh, <coughs> It's just sad, it's sad. We're master grovelers in Ireland, huge grovelers. Took us four and a half hundred years to get out of those boys in 1922. By 1937 we'd politically managed to shake off the yoke. Now we're back to groveling again. We don't seem to be able to get away from it. We groveled the Brits for centuries. We were master grovelers. Imagine even Cromwell said that when he came here. Oliver Cromwell, imagine he said that. He said he could not understand a nation that loved the monarch more than the English. The Irish loved the English monarch more than the English did. Hard of credit, I know, but what a business. Anyway, next thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about, a, I did, a, did a, a video on March the 22nd, 2010. If you want to see it, I've put a link to it. Interesting video. It was called Tsunami Coming. And basically what it was about is, it relates to an article, and the article is from the newspapers during the week. And the article is written by the Professor of Economics at UCD, a man called Professor Morgan Kelly. And he's only one of a small handful of men who have any uh, integrity within the domain of the world of economics. Because most of these people are not worth, if they were on fire, you wouldn't urinate on them to put them out. Most of these economists. But uh, he's one of the exceptions. And he's a man of uh, deliberate integrity. He's a man of, uh, obviously, uh, his own personal sort of view would be rejected. And it was rejected out of hand for years. Of course, now it's all come to pass. And basically what he did was he, he amplified what I, I said in really basic terms in my uh, 
this article, which was on March the 22nd, as I say, in 2010, and I headed it, Tsunami Coming. And basically what it was about is as follows. In the period between 2004 and 2008, we issued our financial houses, our banks, our mortgage companies issued 500,000 mortgages. That's correct. Half a million new mortgages were issued in a five year period in this country. And if you average it out that each of those mortgages, say, say in round terms, was for 300,000, that makes the totality of that, those, those mortgages worth 165 billion. And they are all resting now inside banks all over this republic, all over, all over the state. They're inside the banks. And the real value, instead of being 165 billion, is about 45 billion, 50 billion. That's, a, that's the real value. And these aren't commercial. These are, not, these are not commercial mortgages. These are private mortgages. These are private, ordinary, individual mortgages. So, Professor Kelly has drawn out what I said, that we are facing into a catastrophe. We, we are facing into an open-ended catastrophe. It's a, a disaster what we're facing into. And people don't seem, you know, like up until now we've talked about borrowing the NAMA money and then taking the money out of the National Treasury Management Agency and giving it to the banks and all that. <laughs> these banks, these banks that we have in this state, our leading banks, are all insolvent, stroke, bankrupt. And what's happening now is, this is all, all these pennies are starting to drop. It's like, it's like watching a reality dawning, you know, that's what's happening. Reality is starting to dawn. Anyway, the bottom line is that I was talking to that friend of mine that I have, that contact that I have in London during the week. And uh, as I told you, he's he writes for an economic stuff, political newspaper, a private newspaper in London. And he told me the word on the street is that Matthew Elderfield, our financial regulator, has seen the real books, not the phony books of the banks, not the phony books, the books that get the audits done on them. They're all the phony books. No, no. He has seen, Matthew Elderfield has seen the real books and he has reported back to Europe on what he has seen. And I've been told that in the early part of next year, the whole banking system in Ireland will be wound up. I don't know how physically that's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to happen. But the Europeans have told the Irish government now, we are not giving you any more money. No more NAMA bailouts. If you want to bail out your banks, you'll have to find the money yourselves. And of course, they can't find the money themselves, can they? They can't find the money themselves. And the reason they can't find the money themselves is because it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable to go to the markets and borrow money. I told you six weeks ago or five weeks ago in a video that that same contact told me what the what the broker shared down the phone at Brian Lennon. If you want to come back to the market and you want us to lend you our money, we will charge you 10%. That's what the broker shared that. And when I said that on, when I, I think I said that maybe on two videos, but I certainly said it on one. I got lambasted by people. People rang me up and everything. Sent me really nasty email. Told me I was talking a load of nonsense. It wouldn't be possible. Well, the first thing that happened was we can't go. We are not able to go to the bond market anymore. That's number one. And if we do go back, I'd say we'd have to pay between eight and a half and ten percent. That's what we're going to have to pay. It truly really is shocking. It truly really is. A desperate situation so that's not sustainable none of that's sustainable so uh, I'm prepared to believe it that man tells me he's told every every single thing he's told me so far I discredited him and didn't believe him and it's all come to pass so I'm prepared to accept what he's saying he's saying uh, the Europeans are not prepared to give us any more money for our banking system we'll have to find the money ourselves or get it from somewhere ourselves if we want to rescue these banks. And these banks are not really for rescuing. It's like throwing money down a big hole. That's what it's like. We have 160, at least 165 billion on mortgages in these private mortgages, in these banks. And that's what they're worth today. 
if you, if you mark them, mark the market. That's what they're worth. And they're not going to recover in a generation. They are not coming back in a generation, the value. And all those brokers know that, and that's why they're saying what they're saying. The final thing I want to say is, I've been reading this expression over the last couple of days in the media, in the general media, those rags, put it all, all, all those lies, all those lies that told us all, for the years and years and years, we had a Celtic tiger. When in fact, no Celtic tiger. All we had was a mountain of debt. That's all we had. We never built any factories. We never did anything. All we did was bet on houses. Like there were horses in a big race. We bet on them. And we were allowed to do that by our state. Our state encouraged us to do it. Told us it was wonderful. Everything was wonderful. All the smart people, all the inside people, all the key people, all the, all the bright people, they told us all that. That's what they did. Anyway, this thing, I have to look up the name of it because it's called pessimism porn. And I've been, I was accused of it over the weekend. Yeah, I was out at the weekend and I was trying to tell people about various aspects of what, what's going on because they, they don't talk. See, I told you, in Ireland, there are certain things that are not spoken about. You can't speak about politics. You can't speak about economics. You can't speak about the church. All you can speak about is what's on the soap operas and who's going to play and what English fucking Division 1 league or whatever they're called, them fucking footballers, them overpaid runts that run around England. That's all you can talk about. Can't talk about anything else. So I was accused of uh, peddling this pessimism porn and I almost totally lost my temper, but it didn't. As you notice, tonight I haven't lost my temper tonight. And uh, what I just said was, I'm going to silence you people. And I'm going to draw a thing called an analogy. And maybe if any of you have not have enough sense, you'll understand what I was saying. It wasn't, it wasn't the word spoke when I said it. I said, we're on a boat in the middle of the North Atlantic. A ship. The ship's called SS Ireland. And it's very like another ship from about 90 years ago. More. Uh, and it was in the North Atlantic too. And it ran into an iceberg. And that's what we've just done. They ran into a physical iceberg. We, we have just run into an economic iceberg. And we're all, all the millions of people, all the thousands of people that are on the boat, because our boat's SS Ireland, we're all up on the deck and we're looking out at the sea. And the men who ran us, the men who ran us into the iceberg, they're all telling us not to worry. Don't worry, we have everything under control. Don't worry. Don't worry. And then some of us are at the rail looking out. And you know what's happening? Do you know what's happening? The lifeboats are all there floating around. And guess who's in the lifeboats? Yeah, the fur coat brigade. And us the steerage passengers are all up in the decks. And the boat's doing that. The boat is doing that. We'll talk more. Good luck. Bye.